there guys, welcome and thanks for joining me on this glorious and gloomy Tuesday afternoon. So I'm jump into casual phantom draft, just to uh, tide us over until the weekend. I'm going to put some more money into tickets and we'll get going on building up our reserves through expert phantom draft until I can afford a keeper's draft. Uh, I'm Glody Vandal here and Tyler Estate Sensor seem like the most powerful. Satan, Magician, Selfish Cleric are also very good cards. Blink Dagger is pretty epic. Ah, oh, this pack is pretty good. I'm okay passing up the Selfish Cleric. Um, I feel like there's plenty. There's usually plenty of those that come around as they're common. Oglody Vandals are great if you're in black. I mean, they're just a great card. Tyler Estate Sensor is a card that I've really warmed up to. It's got a huge body, uh, like health value, so that it can keep it can keep itself in play against anything other than like red and black heroes. Uh, and also like keep its effect going for a long time. So it's, it's a really nice sort of thing to stick in front of a regular creep or plague wards or something just to keep it alive and annoying as long as possible. I may have to take the blink dagger here because it's not something you see very often. I mean, it's an uncommon, so it's kind of goes with the territory. Yeah, so three good uncommons in this pack. Uh, I'm not too fussed on Pogna. He's an interesting one. I quite like him, but I don't really know how to value him. I think his signature card is not great. People are just going to play around it if they can. And if they can't play around it and they play spells, it's usually not not too much of a penalty. Like, it doesn't put people off too much. Uh, I really like him for his, his uh, skill, though, like the ability. Condemning random enemy improvements is pretty great. The randomness is not usually a problem because people... I mean, improvements at the moment, people only play the good ones. Like, so it doesn't really matter. You're sniping something good. Uh, it's just making sure he's in the right lane. I do have Blink Dagger to allow me to do that. Satan Magician is probably more versatile. You can splash them. They give you more mana for everything. Glody Vandal is good aggro, but I'm not in aggro yet. Uh, I feel like these are the most solid picks. Blah. There's a lot There's a lot of good stuff we're passing, so we're going to pass black and people are probably going to move into black, which is just something we need to take into consideration. Four sign of friendly fire, great, so we'll keep our blue streak going. Nothing else was really taking my fancy there. Timbersaw is an annoying card to come against, but I'm not too fussed about passing that. This is one of those guys that's really annoying. I really like Whirling Death. Whirling Death is pretty solid. Um, at two cost, you cannot really knock it. Um, yeah, his, his passive reactive armor is okay. But I like, well, I like Whirling Death, and he's just got a body. It's just a shame his attack value is so low for a red hero. But any higher, and he's potentially getting getting a bit out of hand. Uh, I don't really know how to value much of these. Armor Rebellion is still going to be good. Stars align. Meh. Keen Folk Musket. Meh. Better late than never is pretty terrible, pretty terrible, pretty terrible. So you kind of have a choice of two, two not great cards. Uh, I guess we'll go for the ramp just in case. It's more reliable than gold if I'm in blue. I'm not a big fan of OD. Really. I've kind of tried, I've tried him a couple times. I'm just not convinced. Is he better than Jamoy? Jamoy's a 3-8. I think I'd rather have those stats just so he lasted longer. Uh, Astral Imprisonment's not terrible. You can usually just drag things out, putting enemy heroes down to make sure you survive a turn, but it's or to re re reduce their sort of casting potential. I don't see anything else I want, and worst comes to worst, it gives me an option to cut out Jamoy. Cut out for Jamoy, I should say. I'm just going to go ahead and hide that since we're definitely not going to be using Rend Armor. Broadsword potential. Solakan is pretty, pretty damn good. Oh, I'm not happy passing it because it's just so good. Um, I don't really think we've got a choice here. Saints of Magician is still pretty solid. Ro I, I am a little bit in love with Rosalie Rejuvenators though. Um, I feel like they, they can just sort of single-handedly swing lanes. 
not only do you get to play it and block a creature or a hero and kill it potentially with the huge body you also heal your tower for seven which people don't always expect um, so it's just something that you can do when they think they've got you on the ropes you're just like I'm gonna not only prevent like seven or more damage but I'm also gonna heal seven damage as well so I am I'm a big fan of that we're not in black this is kind of the problem it's a powerful card I think it's just good enough to take it. Say to a magician, a second one would be okay. Um, but this just gives us some options, doesn't it? That's great. A lot of solid cards here too, guys. Why are you getting so many good uncommons? Um, I, I am a big fan of home field advantage. I really am. Like There are so many times it comes down to like two heroes in a lane on their own and you're just disabling one of them every round. I'm sorry, I'm going to take little pauses every now and then. I've got, I've got a nice cup of tea going to keep me warm. <laughs> I apologise for nothing. I'm British. <laughs> oh, if only that were less funny. Mm, do we want the ramp? Meh, I guess. Kind of works nicely with Satan the Magician. I feel like we kind of want something big like a Thunderhide. But, I mean, they're common. We'll, we'll likely see another one. Um... I feel like if I'm going to run Solar, I'm going to want Iron Fog. But there's also potential for taking one of these others. We're already running four improvements, which is a little bit awkward. I guess three of those are Solars. Let's pretend we're scrubbing her. Uh, we put in Farvan instead, like no, just on the off chance we do something blasphemous like that. Mm, yeah, I feel like if we've got the ramp. Having a Thunderhide, even two Thunderhides actually doesn't seem terrible. If we've got this much ramp. Yeah, I'm not keen on any of these. Spitfire's a solid card. I mean, there's still, there's still a lot of potential that we put her back in. Um, it's really not going to be much of a problem for us to do that. Uh, this is kind of nice, but I just feel like initiative cards are higher priority for us at the moment. Stall, stall. Yeah. Not opposed to these, just as sort of stalling measures if we've got nothing else to do. Yeah, that's too terrible. Ah, I'm not a fan of Blade of the Vigil, I'll tell you that, but I actually really don't mind. <laughs> I actually really don't mind uh, Curse A tier. Like, if I was actually running red, I don't know, I just think it's fine. You've got some of the. You've usually got these kind of armored creatures to deal with the zombies, so. Free, free gold generation. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good. But. Hey ho. So, we do want some green heroes. Is Abaddon good enough? Is Abaddon better than Farben? Meh. I'm not a fan of Aphotic Shield. I mean, it's, it's passable. If you've got weak heroes like OD. Potentially, I'm gonna heal up long with damage immunity. About two. I do like it. I do like borrowed time. Is this good enough? I think we've got a very high chance of seeing Abaddon come back round. Um, there's so many good cards in this pack. There's so many good cards. Hourglass is so solid. It's just really annoying to play against. This gives you a lot of good value. You put it in the lane that you're losing and you don't really care about. The one that you'll abandon later. Uh, you just really rack up an advantage with it. It's it's pretty fantastic. I quite like Vool. I'm going for like a kind of creepy build um, with two armor rebellions. So far, maybe that'll change. Foresight is always solid. A single intimidation is solid, but it's a common, so I'm okay seeing that later. Same with Foresight, potentially. You don't want to pass too many of them, but it'll encourage people to go into blue but at the same time you can i mean assuming you're drafting against other players that is i'm still not quite sure how it works people were talking on reddit and other things about drafting against bots which meh i mean you still i think sending them good cards is going to mean they pick them potentially these are really solid but i just do not have any good red to go into i think we just take on earth secrets uh, maybe Abaddon. No, I think creatures are more important at this point. Creatures are more important for us at the moment. Uh, 
uh, but card drawing is just always, always a good factor. Two Vandals is so good. Just so good. I can't, I can't pass them up. That's just, that's just crazy. Like, what, what is going on there? Hmm. I don't really care about those. Avernus's Blessing is just the lesser of two evils there. It's just bad, but fuck it. Mm -mm -mm. These are all pretty pointless. I guess we just get some combat tricks. I'm not keen on Lion. I've tried to like Lion, but eh. These are all really bad. And now I wish I'd kind of take. No, I don't wish I'd left oh, no, secrets behind. That's a lie. I can't even say it with a straight face. I mean, potentially we just drop these. We we'll see. We we'll see how it goes. one farthing. The ten green cards, more potentially. So we kind of want some green heroes. Uh, maybe it was worth taking Abaddon. Just because these are all pretty bad. Hey! For some reason people don't seem to like him. I, I don't mind. I just figured I'd probably see him again. It's one reason why I was quite happy. Let him go around. Always pleasant to see him back, like I won't lie. Didn't expect it, but yeah, there's a fairly good chance. Oh, most of these are terrible. Most of these are absolutely terrible. Uh, we do already have two friendly fires. If I take Iron Fog, we're definitely able to splash this. We are going heavy on the improvements, though. Yeah, I feel okay with this. Friendly Fire is okay, but there are definitely times when it's not the greatest. It's not solid removal. It can be. It can be good. It's just not reliable enough, I guess. Uh, it's Venno. Venno Pickoff. Pickoff is solid. And it is very useful. Um, being able to cast into any lane. We've got nine black cards. Without another black here, I guess we could splash Debbie. We could even go for a Debbie potentially. Um, I have enough of these that I do want more blue heroes. I'm already potentially dropping one or both of them for Jamoys. Mm. Would I be really badly done if I had two Jamoys in the deck? I don't know, honestly. I don't know if I value Venomancer more than Jamoy. He's usually just the guy that you drop into a lane and stall it with. Like, you just try and get him to survive and you just stall that lane out. I think I need another green hero. So I think we're going Black Splash for Sola, uh, green with Farvan, potentially one more with Jamoy. I guess Creepswarm. Creepswarm's kind of ideal at the moment. I think I'm fine with that. Ooh. Ooh, I don't really have any expensive items at the moment. We're going into the last pack, so I guess it's not really the... Yeah. So what else are you going to do? Yeah, I just don't think anything else is worth it. Bronze Legionnaire is solid, but the, we, we can't go into red now. Like, it's too late. I feel really... Like that, whoever's drafting red, oh my god! Whoever's drafting red is having an insane time, like... <laughs> I bet they're I bet they're loving it. Bristleback this late in the game, like at least two Bronze Legionnaires and an Ogre. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all seems pretty bad. It all seems pretty bad. Still seems pretty bad. I keep mistaking this for um, Defend the Weak. It's kind of easy to do. It's just not a great card though. The, these are all pretty trash. Like, there's really no no two ways about it. I probably won't be playing any of those. Troll Soothsayer is super good. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, okay. 
I think I like Magnus here. We were going to go for Farvan. And Farvan's much more defensive, and I think what we want to do is try and go aggro. We've got the Iglody Vandals, we've got the Assault Ladders. We're going to have like a bit of mana rampy stuff like that. Arm the Rebellions. Um, I think what we do is we take these two. Because we want creeps and we want extra damage, essentially. We'll probably drop OD. Uh, he gives us some measures of control, like stunning the only hero in a round with Astral is not bad. Not terrible. Yeah. Reptile Signet Ring is pretty super good. I might normally take it over... How many green cards with 22? Don't have any gold. Ugh. So we'll have a bad blue. Potentially we drop these. Down to 13. Let's do it too. Right, cards. Hmm. Do we just do we need another arcane assault? Do we need an arcane assault? I don't think we need another one. I think I'm okay with this. It feels kind of awkward going so heavy into green, but it's the colour that's open that the most. Mm, these are all pretty crap. I mean, I like, I like, like, oh, damn it. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would have. Nah, maybe not over Magnus. I would have rather had him over Venno. God damn, for certain. <coughs> Rest of the pack is pretty bad. Oh, that's not terrible. Don't really care about it. Well, they seem to have a fair, a fair amount of options. Not 100% sold on our choices, but you never know. A little frustrating, actually. I kind of liked the addition of these um, sort of color markers, the banners, I think they're called. Uh, to access them, go into the system, and this box is usually ticked with hide color sweet banners, uh, like card sweets. And it just gets rid of a little symbol. I'm kind of annoyed that they put them behind the arrows, though. It kind of feels like a bit of an oversight. I'm going to try and drop our green down to, uh, to as close to 16 as we can, um, because honestly, we really don't want too many cards in green if we're only going to have the two green heroes. It already kind of feels ugly having the three color split. Um, even if we do get a, I, even if we do get, sorry, um, a lot more options that way, a bit more flexibility in terms of cards and style for the deck. So, so I quite like Caught Unprepared. It's a really interesting one. I feel like it works much better in like a green red or green red black deck or something like that, where you can sort of reliably kill their heroes. Um, it, it's kind of a card where if you can build up a gold advantage and make sure that your enemy isn't isn't doing more than sort of killing a creep every now and then, you can really get a lot of value out of it. You sort of check their hand. And as the card says, like you can catch your enemy unprepared. You you literally wait until the moment when they don't have much gold, they don't have any items in hand, or they only have one item and you're fairly sure what it is, like a healing item or a health item or something, or a town portal scroll. And you're kind of just keeping it there to force them to use it on that one hero just to get it back. So it's, it's kind of nice, I kind of like that. I'm not fussed about the smooth ball. It's a big, big late game. Sort of two mediocre creeps. Relentless well, Zombie is okay. Um, buys you two turns in the late game. You don't really want to play him early, that's kind of the thing. Uh, these guys, good late game. Good vandals are good. Yeah. 
we are running fairly light on creatures, which is not not the best strategy potentially. We do have Venomancer to make up for that, which is kind of nice. Um, I feel like Venomancer and Assault Ladders is going to be a very interesting lane, potentially threatening 80. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no red in the deck. Good, good. Those of you who've seen me before know that at times I have included dead cards in my deck because honestly I've gone straight to these the sort of skipping mode where I can filter my deck for the right cards and completely forgotten to look for the fact I had dead cards from the last pick of the pack. Last pick, pack five, you can't change things from, you can't put things on the bench. Uh, we definitely do not want them on the block with the health there. I think this feels okay. Fairly unimpressive starting stats on our green heroes. Solar is going to be a big beater. Uh, would that I had enough black cards for Debbie, but I feel like it's a bit of a stretch at the moment. Uh, dum -dum -dum. I do have those two creeps. Mm -hmm. A lot of spells and a lot of improvements, which is... Not really something I'm happy to see. I feel like potentially the improvements, but I've got a lot of them. Drop this down. We don't have a lot of expensive items I'm looking to get. Jasper Daggers, I, kind of, I don't mind taking a, a broadsword or a pair of Jasper Daggers just for the sort of the matchup you really need to punch through some red hero with armor. Potentially sort of a green hero that's granting armor like Farben or Triant. Uh, you're trying to punch through the neighbors. Yeah. Feels not unreasonable. I'm never really happy about it. Sure, so it's fine. It puts these up in, puts Venno up into range to kill a creep, so that's all you really need, right? <laughs> that's all you really need. Uh, two cards, two cards to cut. <laughs> Maybe just the Iron Fox. Maybe just the Iron Fox. They're usually really solid, but I don't have any particularly good. I guess I could just look into multiples of multiples of items early is never bad. I don't really have a lot to replace them with in black. Grazing shots terrible. Well, very very situational. Some extra creep generation. Mm, there's nothing that I obviously want to cut. Tower Barrage is not the world's best spell, but it's also not bad. It helps kind of stall things out. The wind scale makes it easier, like just punch a few holes for Saw to get through with the assault ladders. There's nothing obvious to drop apart from those though, so just have to go. Alright guys, we're going to give this a try. Uh, I'm going to call this video here. Um, so I look forward to catching you in the next one. We're going to jump straight into a game. Peace and love guys. I hope you have a good afternoon and I'll see you in a moment.